Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, today's free educational webinar. Uh, my name is Ken Miguel. I'll be hosting this webinar. It's a uh, beautiful, sunny day here in uh, San Dimas, California. It's about 75 degrees outside. Too bad we're stuck in our offices doing this webinar. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. Uh, we are coming off the heels of a very successful uh, trade show in uh, Bogota, Colombia, and big uh, good job to Bolide uh, Latin America division for that trade show. Um, today, it's going to be we're going to be talking about the future of our surveillance industry. Uh, whether you're, you're a Bolide user or not, this is going to be something that you're going to see very often on a lot of products now and in the next coming years. We're going to talk about the newest, newest technology in video compression, um, primarily known everywhere as H.265 or HEVC. So we're going to talk about why it's better than past technologies, uh, why, uh, how it works, and you know why you should consider uh, looking at products that have uh, this type of technology. This webinar is brought to you by Bowlight Technology Group. We're all, with over 20 years experience in the surveillance industry. We bring only the latest and greatest in IP video, HD over coax, accessories, recordings, you name it, they probably have it. So here with me uh, to conduct this webinar is uh, one of our, our lead tech support engineers. Michael Lugo. Mike, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. I'm glad to bring this uh, technology and information to our customers. Pretty excited about the subject? Yeah, I am. I am really excited about it. Okay, so in this webinar, again, I'm um, going to talk about the background of H.265, how it was introduced not only in surveillance, but in broadcast and in you know video in general. Um, and how this technology will affect uh, products for security um, from a technological standpoint to a practical uh, standpoint. So let's go ahead and start. You guys uh, will see, you guys see a questions box on your screens. If you have any questions, feel free to type it in. Uh, we'll go in and answer them throughout the webinar. You're going to want to stick around until the end of this webinar and you'll see some of the more exciting stuff that's coming out from us. So let's start with the definition of H.265 or HEVC. HEVC stands for High Efficiency Video Encoding. So this is a, a compression standard that was a, a joint venture from two groups. So Video Coding Experts Group or VCEG and uh, MPEG, Moving Picture Experts Group. And the MPEG group calls this MPEG-2. MPEG H2, yeah. H2. And VCEG calls it H.265. Yeah. Okay. But they're, you know, they're working in collaboration as far as finding uh, tweaks to make this um, video encoding more efficient and better moving forward. So with the uh, growing popularity of HD video, uh, not only 1080p video, um, it's, it's also the UHD format, which is going to be 4K. Um, we've, we've seen a lot of products support 4K content, as well as for security, um, the higher end uh, products, you know, that's going to be fairly soon are going to be 4K to 8K, uh, which is 8 to 16 times better than 1080p. I mean, it's, it's great leaps and bounds from what we have available, uh, well, last year up to now. But to make, you know, the encoding for this higher, ultra-high definition content, the compression technology needs to step up to that level as well. And HEVC or H.265 really has made the leaps and bounds compared to the past H.264 compression from the last, you know, half decade. So, Mike, let's go ahead and... Um, uh, introduce H.265. Uh, yeah, because so H.265 is, I can't say that it's a, 
That's a better compression. It's it's um, upgraded from H.264. It took H.264 and just made it better, basically, is, is to put it in a layman's terms. Um, and it's not just the compression, it's more efficient. And that's going to cause us to get a better bit rate um, and less use less data and do it at half the speed. So it's a really exciting technology. It's developed to be twice as efficient as, at least twice. At least uh, twice. As of right now. Yeah. Of H.264. Yeah. So why, uh, why is it better? Why is it better than H.264? Let's talk about that. So for one, it offers the highest possible quality given right now on the market. So up to 8K, uh, which you can't do with H.264. It won't support it. Um, it offers the lowest possible rate for any given quality. So it's backwards compatible. Uh, its encoding is very fast and is done through the hardware. Um, it delivers the world's fastest. The highest quality, whether you're doing uh, high quality offline, online, um, Blu-ray is going to adopt, but has adopted it. Um, some of your newer, like Xbox One has adopted it. Your newer TVs have adopted it. Um, it's going to be the future. And we've seen four, four megapixel, five megapixel, even 10 to 20 megapixels uh, cameras out at running or compressed at 264. And if you guys have used them, you know how much you have to worry about this, you know, your structures are supporting the bandwidth that it transmits, even on a local network. Correct, correct. So, like I said, better compression, less bandwidth equals better video quality. But let's talk a little bit about these, these uh, topics. One, compression. What is compression? Why do we need it? What does it mean to uh, the CCTV world? So video compression is the process of encoding video um, in such a way that it consumes less space than a regular video recording would because HD video, 4K video is very, very data intensive. It takes a lot of data. So the, the recorders actually take that, convert it, compress it, and you're able to store more video, see it clearly on your hard drives, as well as transmit over the internet. So it's not more compression, it's better compression. Better compression. Correct. So here's a, a, a timeline of, of how compression technology came about. Uh, if you guys have been in the industry for a while, back when uh, DVRs uh, started recording into hard drives, it was MPEG-2. Uh, about year 2000, 2001, it was MPEG-4. Then, you know, around the uh, last a part of the uh, 2000, 2000s, it's uh, H.264 up to now. So uh, I have a, a short timeline of, of how this talk technology came about. Um, in 2012, actually, um, it was an Android tablet uh, that had a, a Snapdragon chipset. It was the first device that introduced and showed both H.264 and H.265 versions of the same content uh, playing side by side. And during this demo, it, you know, it showed that there was a 50% bitrate reduction compared to H.264 compressed content. Uh, fast forward 2003, again, um, H.265 uh, started adopting 4K, uh, different versions of it, you know, were, was developed and, you know, was able to support more frames per second, you know, at a higher resolution. Uh, another notable uh, timeline, 2014, um, around se September 2014, the Blu-ray Disc Association announced that 4K Blu-ray Disc specifications will support, now support 4K video at 60 frames per second. Um, and 4K Blu-ray discs uh, started being licensed around summer of 2015, um, and 4K Blu-ray uh, disc players, you know, were started coming out uh, late 2015. Okay. Uh, September 9th, 2014, um, Apple announced that the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus um, supported 
H.265 for FaceTime over uh, cellular network. So if you guys are iPhone users, you notice that FaceTime quality got way better around this time. It's because of H.265 compression being integrated in iOS devices. October 2014, Microsoft announced that Windows 10 will support HEVC or H.265 out of the box. Uh, around the same time, Android's newest um, OS at the time, Lollipop, released out-of-the-box support for H.265 and HEVC. Uh, if you're an Android user, this is why content probably looks better after the Lollipop um, or support, supported better content after the Lollipop OS was available. Now, um, Feb February 2015, uh, VLC Media Player released a version that supported, fully supported HEVC playback. Uh, in terms of the surveillance industry, April 2015 is when H.265 prototypes were introduced at ISC West. Okay, and finally, the year after 2016, the products were released. Uh, June 2016 is when Bolide released our, our newest IPAC Next uh, camera and, and NVR line featuring this H.265 compression. So that's a timeline. It's fairly new technology, but it's it's a fast-moving technology with a lot of innovation in a short uh, amount of time. So I know we're uh, we're talking about compression, 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 but what really does it mean? Um, so it's hard nuts and bolts. Video compression. Here's just, here's a quick diagram of what the H.265 compression, uh, adopting the older H.264 technologies, using. Um, prediction detection. Now we call it intra-picture picture detection. And so basically what it does is it takes um, the steel bits in an image and guesses of what those images is going to be. So it takes the first two um, frames and guesses what that third frame will be because the, the picture hasn't moved in two frames. So by doing that, they're able to compress less of the data, they don't have to you don't have to use processing power doing less data and you don't have to use um, as much as much uh, hard drive space because you're it's more efficient. Um, so we used to use or H.264 264 worked the same way. Right? Worked the same way. So the difference between the two is the way that it structures it. Macro blocking was the old the old version now we've moved to coding tree units and the difference is 8 bits to 64 uh, mac macro blocks used 8 bits to code and h.265 is now using up to 64 so it still uses the 8 16 32 and 64 that's able to to change everything so, so what is coding you know we're talking all this coding Coding is the format that is used to compress the video. And like I just mentioned, macro blocking and, and code tree. Uh, there's a little, just a little more information about the uh, intra picture prediction. Like I said, it takes three blocks, the first two, L1 and L2, to predict the third block. Uh, because of this, we're actually able to encode video faster, uh, making processing faster and using less data. So let's talk about. Uh, macro blocks and coding tree blocks. Here's two pictures of the older technology and the newer technology. You can see in the image, uh, the older macro block is very uh, consistent, just eight by eight bits, and you're only able to change within those bits. The new coding tree allows you to change, like I said, eight, 16, 32. So you're able to change the whole area of what can actually be predicted for the picture. So here's the way code blocking works. You can see that everything is in bits of eight, and that's it. You're limited to that. Um, and I'll show you right? two six four. And I'll show you in a second what it looks like when it's having trouble doing that. But that's a standard um, diagram of what H.264 would do. Now here's a standard diagram of what H.265 can do, and you can see it's very very different. Uh, you see blocks of 32, blocks of eight, 64. Um, and this is way more efficient. So I'm pretty sure everybody has seen 
this image before either on your your TV, a DVD. This is problems with the processor trying to process the information, the bits, and you can see the macro block squares are having prediction problems because that's what's, what's going on in the image. Well, H.265, you don't have that problem because it's able to predict smaller areas. Um, the, the, the prior picture, you have areas that are intercepting with each other and it's having problems trying to guess what that next block should be. So you get a much smoother image, cleaner image. And is that the way it's able to save your clips in a smaller yes. small file size? Smaller file size because you don't it's not using so much processing power to try to figure out what that is. And that's when you get the green blocks that it's lost data basically. Let's talk a little bit about bitrate. So we know that it the compression has us use less data. But what about bitrate? How does it how does that transfer over to internet speeds? So what is a bitrate? Bitrate is the bits transferred um, from one location to another, from your DVR to your mobile device, from your DVR through the network. Here's just a quick diagram of how H.265 affects data consumption. So from an older MPEG-2 DVD, everybody's familiar with DVDs, the bit rate is uh, 32 megabits a second, as opposed to uh, H.265, it's only six. So this is a 1080p full HD at 23 frames per second, which is real time. You can see the comparison. Uh, look at the data, for, for instance. Um, two hours of data is 26 gigabytes as opposed to only 5 H.265. That's a major difference. Yeah, that's, is that the same, oh, same resolution? Same resolution. This is 1080p. So we're not talking 4K yet. So we're just, if you were to use your old 1080 stuff with the H.265 compression, that's a major difference. I mean, major. So let's talk a little bit about resolution. Uh, I mentioned that... Um, H.265 supports up to 8K, and that's incredible, especially in CCTV, 8K is, wow. I mean, TVs now are barely getting there. Can you imagine the picture quality you were going to get out of an 8K digital video recorder? And this is, this is crazy. 8K is still probably a ways ahead. It's a ways ahead, yeah. 4K is definitely, oh, definitely. knocking on our doorsteps yeah. here. Um, and prior, we've had four... We've had four megapixel, six megapixel cameras for a while now, and you had up until now, you weren't really able to see the full potential of the camera, and we were only able to use it for digital uh, zoom and stuff like that. Now, the DVR or MVRs now support up to four 8K. You have a 4K TV, you're going to see that four megapixel camera, so it's cool. That's pretty amazing, considering you'd think 1080p was. You know, yeah. the highest that you can go for a while there. For sure, and it's, it's, it's a major breakthrough in, in the technology. So resolution. Now, H.264 was very efficient. It was a breakthrough in uh, CCTV and, and technology, period. And you think to yourself sometimes, well, how much clear can it get, you know? Um, because of the compressed file size, and smaller blocks were able to get more detail into those smaller blocks. And if you could see uh, the image on the screen, they look very clear, both of them. They almost look identical. But if you look at the very small details, you can start to see that H.265 is able to point those details out. Uh, freckles in the girl's face, um, colors in the hair, things like that. Small details that you're going to be able to get out of an H.265 um, resolution or technology, I should say. In terms of bandwidth, same video, streaming online, uh, camera on top of a tower. You can see that the resolution is going to take about 9 megabytes to stream that video as opposed to the H.265. That's a major, major difference. We're talking 8 megabytes less, almost. That is, that's incredible. That's incredible. This is going to allow customers who have slower internets, maybe they're out, but there's no internet provider, they're using satellite or something like that, H.265 is going to allow those customers to now be able to stream video over their network, which they couldn't do before, not even with H.264 
or D1, not even, I mean, they couldn't, it just, they couldn't do it. H.265 is going to allow customers, it's going to open up the open door. Up, uh, yeah, a whole spectrum of, of Correct. opportunities and innovation, right? Yeah, they're very exciting, very, very exciting. We got a question here, Mike. Um, will, am I, will, H, will my HDMI, current HDMI cables and video outputs on my television um, run H.265. Does it have any relationship with with the cables and the uh, output of? Yeah, that's a very good question, and this goes across the board with any when it comes to CCTV or any uh, video digital video equipment. You're only as strong as your weakest point. Okay, so uh, older TVs before the year 2013 did not support H.265. There will be, this converters are coming out, you can add to your TV that will allow it to happen, but all TVs made after 2014 will be compatible hardware-wise and software-wise. But That's HDMI 2.0, right? HDMI 2.0 is, is the key. So prior to that, you were able to get uh, 2160p at 30 hertz. With HDMI 2.0, now you're getting uh, 2160p 60 hertz that's a major difference if anybody you're familiar with having a 1080p 30 hertz and a 1080p 60 hertz tv or 720 30 it's a major major difference so you want to make sure that you're getting the most out of your equipment um you're going to go with an h.265 recorder and you have a tv that is h.265 compliant you want to make sure that your cable also matches that it's very important would you advise a user to pick up a 4k monitor if they're using uh, for sure uh, for let's say a four megapixel two six five for sure why not if you can do it why not I mean you would you'd be paying for something that you're not getting the most out of you always want to get the most out of everything so you're only as strong as your weakest point you get a two meg TV and a four meg camera you're only going to see two meg and that's just how it goes so if um, the job site has existing monitor check. check if it's how do you even check check if it's made twenty thirteen yeah. Um, but before or after 2013? Yeah, because remember, the technology wasn't even available prior, so most TVs are not going to have that technology incorporated into it. You can always check the manufacturer's website, um, stuff like that. So this is another chart of uh, bandwidth. You're able to save 30 to 50% of your bandwidth with H.265 because of the compression and because of the bit rate. Together, the combination is going to give you better bandwidth. So let's talk a little bit about storage. We know that we get a better bit rate. We know we get uh, better bandwidth. What about storage? So video compression, lower bit rate, less bandwidth. What does that equal? Less storage. And this is crucial with video surveillance because storage costs a lot of money. A lot right? of money. So if you're able to provide you know, less amount of storage and still be able to save you know same amount of, of video yeah why not yep and then not only that since we're using higher megapixel cameras of course they're going to use more storage so we're going to need to cut back on the way it holds that storage um how do you do it h.265 compression so here's another picture of the way it is able to save or how much you're able to to save with h.265 so a standard 1080p, 2 megabits a second, you're looking at 62 terabytes of data being used if it's running 24 7, 30 frames a second, 360 days a year. As opposed to H.264, it's going to take 4 megabits and you're going to double 124 terabytes of hard drive space it's going to take up. So it's half. It's half. It's literally half. Yeah, so I mean that's a lot of data being saved. So if you're quoting a, a 16 channel job, if you would traditionally quote eight or twelve terabyte, you can go to the four and save you know save on on the hard drive. Yeah. Or save your customer on, on yeah. the hard drive. Or, or that or there's been instances in the past where customers want to have more data be stored, you know, a month, two months yeah. and we weren't able to do it before because the capacity of the hard drive wasn't and able to hold it, but now you can. VRs have big limitations as far as exactly. the number of bays and built in. Exactly. Right. 
so that's nuts and bolts of, of H.265. Um, again, we want to reiterate, it's all about saving on, on storage. So that's half storage bit and rate. half bit rate, half transmission. So this technology really opens up the door for somebody like, a, like us, Bolide, to create hardware adopting this technology and just have better features and um, better function and just work better, record more. All that more okay. efficient. So, Any more efficient. Um, to end this to this webinar, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over this particular line that we just released in June called IPAC Next. So this is our newest newest um, IP and recorder line. All of this stuff adopts this new H.265 technology. Okay, so not only are these cameras better, you know, they're, uh, cost wise, they're actually um, better as well um they work better they're smarter um it, you, guys, you guys might see ads for this line on sdm magazine ssi i mean we're this is heavily um advertised in all the industry uh, magazines and the cameras basically they just go along with the technology more yeah. efficient more efficient technology more efficient cameras it's just all around um it really is the next generation of, of uh, CCTV. Yeah, well, it's good to have the technology. Yeah, you you want to have the actual hardware that you can buy. Exactly. That uses it, right? Yep. So again, you know, two six five, two six four comparison. As far as the the cameras, uh, we have it available in all styles. You have your fixed four megapixel bullets and eyeballs. Um, we have a question here: Is a slideshow going to be available to download? We can send it to you, Nigel. Uh, we'll email you the, uh, the this PowerPoint presentation. Uh, we have uh, the varifocal cameras, um, of course, all have uh, motorized lenses on them now. This is super hot, super easy to use. Um, again, H.265 compression. These are all four megapixel cameras. Um, really, really good stuff here. Um, the NVRs, of course, we have an 8, a 16, and a 32 channel available. Again, of course, H.265 compression. Um, we have a feature that people love on our DVRs called Quick Connect. So it's the automatic port forwarding instant connection on the phone or tablet um, using our free app. Um, and that feature is now integrated in our NVRs. And if you guys haven't had a chance to check, check it out, um, I recommend you do go to our website, get the QR code and download the app and see how easy your installs will be to connect your DVR, MBR to the network. Yeah, it's so incredible. If you guys still do automatic, if you, if you guys still do port forwarding, um, you got to check out this technology <laughs> because it's going to save you guys time. Yeah. Uh, of course, going back to the cameras, not only do they have the newest compression technology, they have all the features that you want. You can it has a, a BNC a port, so you can use them with PVM uh, monitors. You've got two-way audio built in. Of course, they're PoE. They've got alarm input and output and built-in uh, edge recording into a micro SD card. I mean, they're smart. You have your camera controls available for every camera. The NVR auto assigns an IP address, right? right? Yeah, so for, it's plug and play. It's plug and play. Cameras. Yeah. Yep. Um, you've got built-in analytics in these cameras as well. Um, here, you have your perimeter um, intrusion. You've got, you know, line crossing in any direction you'd like to set it to. And, you know, loitering or stationary object. Um, and again, you know, these uh, adopt the new H.265 technology, both on the cameras and the NVRs. I mean, overall, great stuff. Yeah, pretty excited. I, I recommend you guys, all of our stuff is online. Uh, we do have the NX cameras online as well as the NVR if you guys want. Um, you, from our website, you can get to the demos. You can play around with them, see what these cameras are all about, um, get a feel for them. Yeah, and that will do it for this webinar. Hopefully, you guys learned about H.265 compression, how they work, why they're better, and hopefully you guys are going to you know, start using this for your projects. I mean, it's just you want to be you want to stay ahead of the curve, right? Mm -hmm.
Um, this webinar uh, was recorded, and we can uh, email you guys copies um, of the links to this webinar. But for further information, you can see our email addresses here. That's uh, mine and Mike's right there. Um, also, check out our website at www.bolideco.com for our latest products and new events. We have a, a Facebook page, a YouTube, and Twitter account. Yeah. This and all of our prior webinars are also on the uh, YouTube account. Yeah, there's a lot of great content on yeah. there on uh, our Quick Connect, Auto Port Forwarding, our H2 over Coax um, line. And, you know, we'll, we'll uh, send you guys invitations to our monthly webinars uh, that we keep doing here. Uh, if you guys have any more questions uh, before we close out, uh, feel free to type it in and we'll answer them for you. If that's it. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us today, and I hope to see you guys on the next webinar. Thanks, everybody.